So hi everybody, welcome to podcast number two. This is amazing. We made it from one to two. That's fantastic. I'm very grateful for that. And thank you for coming back to watch again. And today I'm honored and thrilled to have my friend and colleague in crime and all things, partner in crime mm. and colleague in music, the legendary, fantastic Eric Anderson. You can read about him underneath. We're going to leave lots of links and things like that. But um, we want to just talk about whatever happens. There is no pressure. And see, we'll see what comes. So, Eric, how you doing? Oh, how I you feel great. Yeah, it's yeah? great to be here in Cologne. I love coming back here. I work here a lot. Good to see you and your, you know, visit and, our And what friends. about the hat, guys? What about that hat? Does he look good? Debonair? This is a hat That's I bought. Great. I, this is a hat. This hat I bought at uh, Galant. Galant. Galant is a... Galant. We're going to have a link. We have a clip. <laughs> <laughs> Galant is a second-hand clothing store with some very chicy, stylish uh -huh. old clothes. Uh -huh. I found this old German hat. And, uh, I think it belonged to Joseph Boy's brother. <laughs> and um, it is in, in the room. It has it still has the paper inside from uh, a, a, a newspaper inside. Oh, let's show the folks in TV now. Look at that. The newspaper. You can see the newspaper from 1963. Whoa. So I still have it. So it's made in Germany. It's very solid. It's good and it probably could carry water over the desert. <laughs> Super. So anyway, and so we go out and they move from one shop, a small shop, to another. I found it by accident. And they got a beautiful hat. It's from men, basically. Hats, clothes. What else? They have some women's things, too. It's stuffed with stuff. It's, it's great. great. It's beautiful. And the salesman is quite um, eccentric and very British and very cool. And uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know. It's part of Cologne. Yeah. It's one of the great things we have here. Eric likes Cologne, by the way. I want you to know. Eric's a real fan of Cologne. Well, Is that true, Eric? We're from New York, and, uh, yeah. and Sheik dubs it the, uh, the Little Apple. It's the Little the, Apple. New York's put the Big Apple, yeah. big apple and this is the Little Apple. <laughs> it's true. That's right. That's this right. is our New York. Yeah, this is our New York. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So good to see you. We're here. So much on your mind these days. Congratulations on your uh, new podcast. podcast. Yeah, yeah. Great. thanks. Communication. We even like silence on this podcast. We, we don't have to talk the whole time. We all know that we all talk enough in life, so. Hmm. My interview's over. <laughs> no, no. So, is there anything you'd like to share? I, as I said last time, I watched a very inspirational podcast by a guy named Lewis Howes in America. You should check that out. And um, he always asks, what's your definition of greatness, for example. So, Louis, thank you for the question. It's not my question. But I think it's a beautiful idea. What are the <coughs> things, or what things are great for you? What do you love about your life as a musician, as a thinker, as an author, as an amazing, amazingly sensitive, artistic person? What is great for you? Is it other people's work? Is oh, it your I think, own I work? I think a, gr great, a great moment is just sitting here talking to you. Oh, Eric, that's great. Now, that's a great moment. That's and we talked I agree. Last, and we, I agree. And we talked last night. We talked we about talked peace. It. Right. We talked about um, why peace, and you know, us coming from the New York protests, uh, the things that are going against the war, and all the, the things that, you know, the protest marches and all those gatherings in New York, and how peace has been sometimes relegated to being um, like a weak thing. It's better to you know, aggression, war, violence, all that stuff, that rings a bell. Look at the movies. You can't show a nipple, you can't show a breast, but man, you can show 800 guns blazing away in a, in a movie. But I mean, so peace has been, regular, you know, kind of given a bad name, you know, like, um, and, and you have your Amy's Room of Peace, you have your, your yearly concert about around this. Because people kind of think peace is some kind of weakling, some kind of, you know, yeah, the word itself, it's we were like, saying, it's, it's a little nebulous, bit. it's like, what is yeah. it, it's like, so we were talking about that last night, and that was pretty great, uh, who people uh, have this yearning for the absence of war and conflict. And we were talking about the word yearning, that yearning is a word that 
Perhaps we can replace it with something, but it's the best word we it can really think of. fits the feeling. Right? Well, it's like a power of you feeling this current, this sort of like river of feeling like uh, that you don't really have a word for it, but it's like if you were in a place that was getting bombed or, or you were being pushed out of your country or you were being murdered, raped, killed, slaughtered, assassinated, assaulted. I mean, all these things are the absence of peace. Yeah. So we're thinking about what do we do about this, and so we we, we, we were thinking about things like um, what what do you do? How do you make peace stronger? So you have to consider peace is this is what we discussed last night, folks. Right. Peace is a power and not a victim. Right. Make it, give it some strength, give it some, uh, give the idea of peace, you know, make make it more muscular, mm -hmm. because it is a very powerful force. And it even goes beyond the absence of not having peace. Right. Hope, dreams, you know, fulfillment, these kinds of things. So we, we, you came up with the, the line, or we did, if you want peace, then be peace. You have to be it and go with the force. Right. To make it happen. Beautiful. Because it's easy to say things like, you know, put on a sign, hate, hate, hate fear, hate fear, or hate war. You put the word hate in, and people could all say, "Oh, that's an activist thing. Let's go get him." You know, mm -hmm. but that's not the way to go. So you need how, to. How have do the you power. be peace? How does how or how do you start to be peace? I don't think you can be peace uh, at the snap of the. Be peace, I think, is a very difficult thing to be because it's like in when you do um, zazen, or you do you know you're sitting, a Buddhist sitting. With, you're supposed to have no thoughts in your head, empty, completely empty mind. Yeah. It's so difficult. And the guy hits you with a stick. Wake, to wake up, wake up. And you don't wake up to more of your own thoughts. You wake up to this empty void, you know, that has to be filled. It's like when Buddha was sitting under the Bodhi tree. You know, the goat herder comes up and he's looking at the guy sitting like with his eyes closed under a tree. And this is, uh, you know, sir. Um, what are you doing? And, the, and Buddha answers, I'm waking up. So it's a, it's a wake up call. So to mm -hmm. be peace, I mean, I don't actually really know what it is. What do you think? I know it's some kind of work you have to... I think uh, the, the paradox is we say, I want to be peace, so we strive to be peace. We try to do the right things, eat the right things, think the right things, practice peace every day, whether you have a yoga, meditation, practice, all of, the, all of those things help. But as they say, from the moment you begin to strive, as soon as you strive for something, it's like uh, it, it's, it becomes something that moves a step away because you're, so you're trying again, for trying it, it for it. It, right. it, it, like it ruins the whole thing. So I guess to be peace is to let go, first of all, of all, I'm just assuming, I obviously am not peace or I wouldn't be rattling on like Talking I am in my me. podcast. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> good no, I think, um, I think we have to strive for it. There's no, there's no, there's nothing better to do with a life than to strive for peace. But um, to strive too much, to do too much pushing for it is not the mm -hmm. way. So maybe we have to find a balance between the striving and the letting go. And, um, well, I mean, if you can just eliminate stress to be, you know, to be peace is the ability to not let these other things grab you by the throat and take you down, like stress, all these things, I should this, I should that. I mean, as you said, you know, when yeah. you're trying to go to sleep at night, you said, well, if, they, if, some, if the powers made the planets and the stuff and the stars orbit around, they got that much, but they're going to make, make poor little me go to sleep. Yeah. By this. the way, I also have to give credit. I got a little bit of that from Marianne Williamson, you know, and the Course in Miracles. They say that in the Course in Miracles, that um, we should trust in the powers that be to lead all things to right action. And um, that's what we're doing now, because we have no idea what we're doing on this podcast either, yeah. but we know it's right action. We're going to just well, trust. What we're talking about, what we talked about last night. We didn't come up with answers, but these are... Good questions. Kind of yeah. good questions and directions because uh, peace has to stand up for itself. It can't just That's be right. something. Um, it can't be only an absence of non-peace or 
it has to have, have a force. There has to be a power yeah. worth reckoning with and worth standing up for. And as a, as a power, just like war is a power, you know, or conflict or authority. Right. Um, resistance is important. I mean, to resist against some of the bad things happening around you, you see it, if you, if you want to do something about it, resist it. And, um, and that way you're getting peace with yourself because you're doing the thing, the right thing. Beautiful. That's how you feel. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Camus, when I worked with Camus, when I was doing a project with Camus, a lot of these things I do in Cologne here. Um, yeah, tell us. With Meyer Records. Not we, everybody knows what well, you're doing. We own a record company called Meyer Records here, and right. they do special things. Um, recording songs, material, original stuff. And um, with Camus, you know, he one of the lessons was he was never for revolution mm -hmm. because he was afraid if you have a revolution, the guys who are leading the revolution, when they become the winners, they turn to become the same assholes as the ones you're trying to get rid of. So that's why he was very much for resistance. Yeah. Resist mm -hmm. and make a change from within. Or yeah. make those changes more like correction courses than complete overthrowing mm -hmm. the system because look what happens. You get military dictatorships, you get Stalin, you get all, you know, you get, you look at what, and all these people got elected, remember? Mm -hmm. The Mussolini's, the Hitler's, the Orban in Hungary, the CC, the Gandhi, all these people that rule the shows, they were all elected. And then they did a takeover. So it's something to think about in America, for example. When you have people trying to dismantle, when the true terrorists are the ones who are trying to dismantle the democracy. It's not ISIS or Al Qaeda, it's not these people, it's like the ones who are elected. They're the ones that are taken out of the park. So they're the true terrorists. So you don't want to Revolution. You want to you resist and try to change the, try and change the personnel. Mm -hmm. Who are? Is that right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Exactly. Change the personnel. Yeah. Start a new movie. I mean, or a new episode of the yeah. of the the series. Yeah. Yeah. As a musician and a songwriter, that part of you, you have many many wonderful things that you do. Um, do you feel that you serve this concept of new personnel? Are you offering, through your music, awareness of these things? Or is it more <laughs> about self-expression, you just, you've got to get it out? I mean, where do you stand? Do you feel, does that fulfill you, what you do? Well, I kind of sidestepped the question of what's great, because I didn't really have an answer for that. Oh yeah, we forgot. So we went into Sorry, peace. we forgot the great news. We went into yeah. peace. Okay. But, um, no, the, um, I never was a protest songwriter. I mean, I come out of the village with uh, Bob Dylan, Phil Oaks, Tom Paxton, Buffy St. Marie, Patrick Sky, Dave Von Rock, those people. But I never, myself, I w w was a protest singer or a protest writer because, first of all, you have to know a lot of things. Second of all, it's a special kind of energy to protest, you know, in song. And it's also the things you're protesting, everything's very ephemeral. Mm -hmm. You know, you can protest against Richard Nixon, but he's not around anymore. Mm -hmm. So, and I was into the game, the songwriting game, to make things that were timeless, that possible, make songs that could, were built to, you know, to stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. But when I did get into protest, these kind of things, the, it's, it's a funny thing, having heard it all the time, and being an interior documentary songwriter, to, to have heard all this, this protest music, you know, when I started, when songs started popping out, and I realized it comes and finds you. And I wrote this song called The Rain Falls Down in Amsterdam against the, you know, the skinheads and way back in 1991, you know, right after the wall fell. So um, that was a song I didn't intend to be a protest song. It's not really, it's more like a, a depiction of what, what was, was, what's going on. Mm -hmm and mentioning refugees and stuff like that, way ahead, way years mm -hmm. and years ago. But then when I worked on the Albert Camus, see, you know, the things I'm doing here in Cologne, that you know about, uh, when I worked with this project, reading all these books on Cologne, revisiting all this stuff, and working with his family and the people down in Provence, you know, songs came out that weren't like specifically protest, but general ideas like a song called, based on his book, um, 
um, the rebel. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I took it off and made these things about we'll rebel against, rebel against that resistance song. It mm -hmm. came out, I mean, it's not my normal, you know, thing. Yeah. But I, I've been, so I wrote that song, and these, they, they just popped up, and this thing with them. You think they come I'm to you? I'm just both, you know. Are you just a channel? Do they come through you, or? Um, yeah, I mean, I basically feel like I'm a stenographer. I mean, I just feel like, you know, when I'm working on these things about, when I'm working with writers for these the series of albums on my records, with Camus and Henry's Bow and also Floyd Byron, um, you feel like you're just channeling stuff. It's in the air and it just kind of, you know, tapped you on the shoulder and and it's coming through and you just kind of write it down. It's, yeah. and, you, and you think when you're writing, you think, man, I could write and remember this. Anyone, it's so simple. And, you know, I could tell you just how you do it, how you write a song. And then once the, the thing's over and it's kind of been abandoned or done or finished, the bubble pops and you can't remember things like a dream. It's like when a dream just goes down the drain like water, you can't, you can't, grab the water back, it's yeah. down on it, like a dream, you forget. And the same thing with this writing thing. A few things I can remember, but you, you don't really know what's going to come out. I mean, but there have been some resistance and protest kind of songs coming through, especially with this, the Heinrich Bull thing, because the parallel realities of Hitler and Nazism in Germany and then the things that are happening now in the world, these trends, mm -hmm. these fascist trends going on, right-wing trends, populist, um, and, um, xenophobic, afraid of outsiders, uh, the fear of losing what you have, all these things, and, and, being, and it's being stoked by these leaders um, to keep your fears really running high. Um, I started writing songs, and of course, when I was writing about then, about Cologne and after the aftermath of World War II, when Heinrich Bull wrote uh, in a city that was totally destroyed. The songs I'm, really, I'm writing about now, not every song, but it's so, I came about this and sort of through the back door. Mm -hmm. And these things come up. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not like a thing I'm trying to do or like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to write about, let's see, well, the, um, the dam burst down in, the, you know, uh, Frankfurt or the, the something happened as a, Workers' riot in, uh, you know, up in Hamburg or something. Oh, that's a good subject. Let's write a song about that. Um, I don't go about that way. It just it come, kind of sneaks through me in another way. Like you were saying about writing. You know, I feel tired. You know, you take you just sit and take your reality. I feel tired now. I'm sleepy. I want to go upstairs, brush my teeth, and go to bed. But, um, but I you, would love to stay. The idea was, but I'd love to stay here with Eric and talk for another two hours because you can write that down. you're having a great talk. That's but, you can, but you can well, write that down. Yeah, you can write that and down. that's the beginning of a song. And that's why true. is it valid? Why is it good? I feel sleepy. Only that is because you can't argue with the feeling, and and uh, it's real. Yeah. And you just put music to it, and no one can argue with that. And so that, yeah. that that's another beautiful. That's another, true. The, the thing you were saying last night, so the, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking a little bit for you, too. Yeah, I know. Excuse I noticed. This is great. <laughs> excuse me. But, but, but it's true. All these it's things super. can make, constitute a song. Yeah. What do you That's think? That's right. I think it's true. And I think that songs are important these days more than ever because uh, there is this uh, distance between people. Um, I think we're all trying to bridge a particular gap. I think as humans, we always feel there's a gap to be bridged. And um, music and, and songs are, I always say that, it's the, one of the best ways to go straight to the heart, straight to the soul of a person. You really get in there, you get past prejudices, you get past uh, yeah, preconceived notions. You have the power to heal a little bit. You can heal, grace, you uh, can give love to someone yeah. through a song. Somebody. You can bring them love, bring them. I mean, it's important. Also, she's connection. a great, great painter too, folks. There's painting, all of her great paintings it's all okay. around here. No, it's true. I'm looking at this one now over here. We'll show it to you later. We'll, we'll move the camera later. But um, I always say that, then we don't do it. But yeah, music, music is a magical thing. It's like you know, human beings. I don't know whether primates sing to each other. I know birds do, but um, I'm no. not sure. Yeah. But. Uh, it's, it's all important, and everybody 
Is that, I can't, I don't know whether we're in it for the same reasons. Or, maybe there is no reason for it. You just do it. It just, it taps you on the shoulder and you, you, just and, and you, it. and you it's your destiny. Yeah. Would you like to sing something or not today? Oh, not, we're didn't. not really prepared. I didn't. Uh, you don't have to, but. If you feel it's um, um, moved. Mm. No, okay. I don't know, I didn't. No, we didn't, it's okay. You didn't it's ask not me about that. You didn't ask me no, about we that. Didn't, we <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> we didn't prepare you for that. <laughs> okay. No, it's okay, Eric, it's great. What else, uh, you know, you have an opportunity to say something to the folks in TV land, in video land. Well, I can show you I this. always say that, is there anything you'd like this to is, share? This is the album that I just hey. did, that I did in Berlin. I'm sorry, in La Cologne. And uh, it's... I was contacted by the family of Heinrich Bull and to to do some original works to celebrate his hundredth anniversary of his of his birth, uh, which was Silent ended. Angel, Fire, Fire and Ashes of Heinrich Bull. Um, I think it comes out. That's why I'm reading it because it's uh, it's backwards in the podcast. Oh, but that doesn't matter. We're going to the there now. It's front again. No, there's there's Heinrich Bull. There's Heinrich Bull, and, uh, painted by Oliver Jordan. And uh, it's a beautiful, he, uh, Meyer Records, they make beautiful vinyl yeah. records too. Great. And this one actually has an extra page. We love Werner Meyer because he does, he gives us gifts like this. Of just adding without us asking, he adds beautiful yeah. extras to <laughs> our albums. I have a songbook in my album that he did. You do? He spent his whole vacation making a songbook for me. Oh, that right, song. that's right. I think that's so nice. So Isn't that above and beyond? So but, the, but he does this beautiful, and it's all here in Cologne, and this is where we work on these kinds of, in the Little Apple here, we work on these projects. The little Apple, yeah. yeah, Eric, so, anyway. it's, it's beautiful what you're saying. I could talk forever. Is there anything else you'd like to, any statement you'd like to make? This is a good time to make a statement. And if not, well, you don't have to. I think it's important to... Um, Plugging along, doing what you do, and not uh, try to expose these the things that are um, making us feel unpeaceful. That's true. So peace and is stick together. I think we got to stick together. Solidarity. Yes. Yeah, solidarity. Resistance. Peace is a power, and not a victim. Yo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We'll be back soon. Thank you, Eric Anderson, so much. And thank Amy you all. Antonin. Yay. Thank you. Ciao.